Wilson Morales from Black Female TV talking to Tori Kittles regarding his latest movie, Among the Beasts. How's it going? Going oh, great. How you doing? Good. You know, it's not that often we see you in films because you got a day job, steady day job, I, you know? I, I, I do. I love my day job. I love my day job. Um, yeah. But I also love when I get to get the chance to, you know, to dive into the independent spirit world and um, and make a film like Among the Beasts. It's not that often, as I mentioned, that we see you in a starring role. So how did it come about for you? Uh, you know, um, well, I got sent the script uh, by Matthew Newton. He reached out to me after seeing me in uh, a film I did called Dragged Across Concrete. And um, and he loved that movie. And he, he wanted me to read this script, Among the Beasts. It's a story of uh, a former Marine dealing with PTSD who um, teams up with a gangster's daughter to go after this kidnapped girl. And, um, and once I read the script, uh, I, I watched some of Matthew's other films. I saw a film he did called Who We Are Now with uh, Julianne Nicholson, who I think is one of the uh, most amazing actors working today. And I loved the film and I loved um, the performances he got from all of the, the other actors in the film. And, and, and I, I wanted to work with him. Um, and I specifically wanted to work with him on this story because it was a, a world where we got to explore what it would be like in real life to, to lose a loved one. You know, um, uh, what lines would you cross to get that loved one back? Um, what would you do to the people who took that loved one if you ever had the chance to be be face to face with them? Um, and so, you know, I, I, I've always gravitated towards flawed characters you know I, I love flawed heroes um so that was one of the things that struck a chord with me um uh -huh. it, just, it sort of came at the right time you know we were able to shoot it around um the equalizer and um and and you know so that that those were the things that that, that were initial you know and then once we got into the whole process of it you know matthew was so collaborative um in the script development um and bringing on the other actors Lee Bay Barrera, Siobhan Jackson of Insecure, um, you know, uh, Norton, Jeremy Holm, Kate Easton, you know, those 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 lovely young women um, uh, who who came in and just everybody, you know, poured the it's kind of funny because this movie has shades of the equalizer, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh when you think about it, about a former Marine, <laughs> law enforcement you know, uh, being called upon to save somebody. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Well, you know, Marines are heroes, you know what I'm saying? And, there, and there's so many different Marines who take on different um, forms of heroism. You know, we got to bring, we got to work with some real combat veterans in this film. Um, they opened up their lives and shared their stories. And some of those stories actually ended up in the film. Um, and, and they added a level of authenticity to the movie that, you know, we, we could never have imagined. And, and they they really helped, you know, uh, ground my performance. They humbled my performance. I was going to get into that. You know, obviously you're playing Marine, but also, you, as you mentioned earlier, you're playing my PST, PSTD. Mm -hmm. How did you get it? How do you get into this character? You know, how much of a deep dive you do into the background? So it's just not a role. You're just reading lines. You know, you go out and do research. As you mentioned, you know, you have these people on set. Are you talking to them to maybe enhance your performance yeah you know I, I um I, I I know a lot of people who who deal with PTSD I think um I think in general most people deal with some forms of, of PTSD on the daily um in in this particular case you know I don't I don't think I've ever shared this with you Wilson but I I, I typically make uh music for the characters I play because I feel like every character has a different rhythm, a different melody, you know, that they move to. And it's a way that I can ground myself and track my performance throughout um, a, a movie. And in, in this case, I, I made, I was working on this, this, the song for this character. And I got a call um, that uh, things are taking a turn for the worse with uh, our brother, the late, great Chadwick Bozeman, um, who was a great friend and a, and a, and a uh, collaborator. You know, we, we were working on a few things. And, um, and I finished the song and, and I sent it to him. And we had this beautiful exchange. Um, it was the last exchange we would ever have. And, and so I, 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 I wanted to sort of infuse 
some of what was going on into that performance, but I, it had to be done in a disciplined way. And Matthew was so helpful in navigating, like how far could we push this character down and bring him back out, you know? So it's the case where art imitates life, life imitates art, you know? Um, so a lot of that, a lot of those things that sort of felt like obstacles and, 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 and defeats, they became, they became triumphs, you know, they became wins in, in, in the process, you know, they contributed so much. And, 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 you know, and Chad was definitely on my heart while making this film. And um, so a lot of that went into the performance. You know, a lot of the roles that I've seen you in, you've been part of a lot, uh, an ensemble. This is also an ensemble, but for the most part, you know, you're on a call sheet, number one. Uh, for you as an actor, you know, what's that feeling like that when you have different projects, but on this particular one, you're on more pages than you normally are on and you have to carry the load of being the centerpiece of, of the film, even though there are other actors that are contributing their parts, but a lot of it falls on you. Yeah, you, you know, I think it's a position that, you know, um, being around other great number ones like Queen Latifah and learning from her and watching, you know, how she manages, you know, uh, just playing the character of McCall, but also being a great leader you know, working with other, uh, you know, great artists through the years. And, and, and you get to learn a lot, you know, um, when you're not a number one. And so I, I think um, the experiences I had prior sort of, um, it really facilitated the position that I was able to step in on this particular film. Because um, I don't necessarily look at it as that, um, okay, I, it, it's all about me. I always feel like it's a, it's a collaboration. In this case, I was also a producer on the movie. So I, I was really interested in, you know, how uh, how to put people in positions where they could win, you know, like how could we, you know, make sure uh, Lola, you know, is, is a fully fledged character and three dimensional so that, you know, Libe can, you know, really show and showcase her, ta her, her talents, you know. Um, what could we do with, um, you know, AJ, you know, Sharonis' character and how, how do they all fit together? Uh, you know, when you're putting together the puzzles of making a film, how do you bring that all together? There are some, some times, you know, where I had to be selfish in a sense of like the solitary scene around the table. Um, you know, and that was completely, yes, going into the darkest of darkest spaces. Um, but, you know, the minute that's over, I'm not lingering in that, you know what I mean? I'm looking at the, the picture in totality of like, okay, we got to put this thing together. You know, this is something that we, we want to make for the people. We want to make big action film. You know, we want to make a thriller and we want audiences to enjoy it and be excited about it, you know, but we also wanted it to ground in, you know, very real things, you know, because PTSD, as you said, is real for so many different people people are struggling with it. Also human trafficking today is something that is, is taboo, is not talked about as much. And so we wanted to explore that world as well. You've been in the game in a minute, for a minute now, obviously you've done a lot of roles, was it TV or film? When you do a movie like this, uh, as, as well as you're a producer on this movie, where do you learn skill set wise, whether it's as a producer or as an actor, you know, that you can take on to your next project? You know, actors can never stop learning. And, you know, obviously you're learning when you're working with a different director on, you know, the Equalizer. But as you continue to do movies and you work with a different director, I'm sure there's something that, you know, his technique or his direction, or maybe you come in on board as a producer that you're seeing that when you say, okay, I'm going to bring this on to my next project. Was there anything in particular that you took out from here? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, from a producerial standpoint, it's all about really managing the whole you know, from your standpoint, you only have to worry about being an actor. You only have to worry about, okay, this is my scene. I'm focused on that. Um, from a producerial standpoint, you're worrying about, you know, the whole of the picture, the other actors, how they fit together, um, the relationship with the director. Does the director have everything he needs? You know, that's something that I'm also conscious of as, a, as an actor. Am I giving the director what they need to fulfill the vision? You know, one of the things you learn in episodic television, because you're getting a different director, you know, every other episode, every every episode, is, it brings on a new director. So you learn how to work with different styles. You also learn how to make sure your performance is, is, is positioned in a way that it's still your performance, but it's also, you know, every director works differently. Um, on, a, on a movie, you know, like Among the Beasts, 
you know, when you start with the script and the development process, Matt and I talked about every scene. We talked about every character. We we cut characters that, you know, we felt, oh, we don't need that character because we really wanted to make the, his vision singular. And we wanted to focus it on, on a few different characters. And so that way we could expand the world um, because we didn't have a, a, a lot of uh, resources, you know, because it, it is an independent film. But we we took those challenges, you know, like like you know Beyonce says, you know, you give me some lemons, I'll make you some lemonade, and that's sort of what we did with with this film, um, and, and that was the joy and the excitement of actually that whole process, you know, the whole process of making the beast sort of felt like this. We didn't ask for anybody's permission to do it, you know. We we're like, all right, let's just go get it done, you know what I mean? Like, like let's go make this, let's make it how we want to make it, and and that's what we did. Before I let you go, obviously, we have a lot of programs on TV because streaming channels, network, cable, there's a lot of options. What's going to get an audience to come out and see Among the Beasts? Well, because the, Among the Beasts was made for the audience. It's an action thriller. You know, you're going to get some kick-ass action, but it's going to be grounded in some real topical issues that people are talking about today. You know what I mean? Human trafficking, PTSD. These are things that are so current in in our in our world right now in our daily lives but we also really wanted to entertain an audience you know we wanted to make a, a, a scope with some really great actions really great characters and some really great actors with some wonderful music and so i think um you know that that once people start talking about it the response so far everybody that's seen it the response has been tremendous and and, and it's continuing to grow. And so we're really excited about that. And obviously, thank you always for the work that you do because you're always so supportive. And I, and I always appreciate that about you. Hey, you know, you clued me on to this and that's what all we need. As long as you're working, I'm working because we need product to promote. Obviously, you want a marketing as well. So we, as long as there's a synergy, you know, out there, everybody wins. Tori, hey, hey. congrats on the road. Obviously, as I see you on Sundays, you know, you're never that far behind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bullsman. I always appreciate you. All right.